This bowl of schnitzel feeds injured Israeli soldiers in hospitals. This home cooked spaghetti feeds Holocaust survivors. And this wholesome cooked rice feeds displaced families in Israel. You heard that right. This is not a regular kitchen. Since October 7th, this local kitchen in Tel Aviv has fed 40,000 hot meals and comfort food to soldiers of the IDF and others affected due to the conflict. This is the story of two sisters who have transformed their Tel Aviv cooking studio into a supportive volunteer-based meal prep kitchen. Aliyah and Shandel immigrated to Israel. They started providing cooking lessons to tourists from all around the world from their Tel Aviv-based studio Citrus and Salt. After the attacks of October 7th, the sisters, along with Chef Alone, put out a call for all volunteers and started cooking. Dozens of people showed up, with more and more coming every day after that. Outgrowing the small cooking studio, the sisters moved to a nearby restaurant that generously donated their space, and then the new Citrus and Salt studio. Together, Citizen's Kitchen has enlisted the help of local immigrants and tourists. Last week, I had the opportunity to volunteer at their studios in Tel Aviv with Chef Alone, and I was truly inspired to share the work that they do. Introducing our chef for today, Alon. Hi. I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed by the entire operation. Thank you. It's impressive. Thank and I you. know that you guys have managed to deliver about 40,000 meals yeah. to Israeli soldiers yeah. and displaced families. How do you feel? Really exciting to do that. We mm -hmm. were starting, of, I think we started on the third day of the war, okay. like putting everything together and uh -huh. it increased slowly. We started like 150, 200, 300 managed to go to 700 and kind of like found our perfect number between uh, five to 600. Uh -huh. And now it's only based on demand. So if we have people asking for food, we will deliver. Okay. And we also have like returning customers who like, oh, you send us food, can you send us more? It was very right. nice. We would like to have some more. Okay. Um, honestly, sometimes it's really hard. I'm sure. But, but also, also getting all the photos and videos from soldiers and families. It's like, thank you so much. And it, this is what helps you keep going, you like find the energy and people supporting and show their love. Now I want to understand what happens after we prepare and pack the food. Like what really happens after we pack? So just like you experienced today, we have people volunteering to come um, prep the food. Right. We have people come to cook the food. And we right. also have people come to deliver the food. Right. And, so it, and they're all volunteers. Everybody's volunteer. We started a community of over a thousand volunteers. We literally opened a second WhatsApp group for volunteers because you have a limit of a thousand people, I think. I want to understand because, you know, even if it's food and people are volunteering, everything costs money. So how True. do you guys afford? True. Like, do you have donors, sponsors, or do you put something out of your pocket? Tell so, us more. at the beginning, we put our personal money into that and nobody thought too much. Like, it right. was like um very much like a, a sense of urgency right so we put our money in in, uh, in a belief that we will get um refund somehow okay we did reach out for donation and okay. we managed to donate over two hundred thousand shekels two hundred thousand from jews and non-jews from that's, here from over the states and europe awesome. like all like worldwide mm -hmm. uh we always promote the the gofundme link that right. people can keep like and donate us more money mm -hmm. and just like to keep us going you know mm -hmm. and also this place needs to be uh we need to pay rent and no we need fun. to keep it going you have your bills to pay we have our bills to pay and we have our lives to live um, but but uh, from what I, from what I understand now it's completely on donations and sponsorship. One hundred percent. A lot of my audiences that watch this channel support Israel. Right. And most of them are from India. Um, and I have to say, India loves Israel, and they have supported Israel before the war and now even more after the war. So, do you have a special message for our right. Indian friends? Okay. So this is really warms my heart. We really appreciate it. It's not we're not taking support lightly. It's not that everybody support us. So I want to thank you guys. I appreciate it and keep supporting us. We really, really appreciate it. And if you come visit, we're going to introduce you to our cooking school and we'll invite you to join our classes. All right. We have a very special person from the volunteering team, Alicia. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm great. How are you feeling? We're just done prepping and packing meals and we're sent it off mm -hmm. yeah about 500 sandwiches 500 sandwiches a lot and, of food. and maybe more in the coming weeks yeah yeah all right so i want to understand how did you guys start this in the first place okay so it really started like two days after the war started so october 9th 
Uh, we all got together in the original Citrus and Salt cooking studio, not far from here, which was a much smaller space, and started right. preparing food. Right. First day, we sent out about 150 meals. We had 10 volunteers. Okay. By the next day, a bar nearby called Hamashpil uh -huh. offered us their space, their kitchen, and we, 24 hours later, moved, started sending out over wow. 500 meals a day with like hundreds of volunteers. That's awesome. So by the end of the first week, we went from like 10 people volunteering to like hundreds of people volunteering. Wow, that's uh, impressive. Yeah, and then November 1st, we moved into this new studio, um, which was meant to be, you know, for cooking classes, but also soon became our volunteer headquarters. Right. Um, and we've been here since. We mm -hmm. How often do you guys do it? Um, now we've been doing it about two, three times a week. Okay. Uh, we also have a lot of groups, like tour groups, who come and want to make this a part of their experience in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, and also just want to volunteers, locals, people who've flown in to volunteer who want to come and contribute. So. I, ha I have to share, I thought people who volunteered are locals, but there are so many people who just like flew to Israel to yeah. volunteer. Like, how do you feel so, about that? I mean, it's wild, honestly. Right? At, the, at the beginning, it was a lot more locals. Like, it was really a community of like Olim, so right. people who like moved to Israel. Right. And it was really nice because it kind of became a place where they can come and like find comfort and find other English speakers. And then, as like Israelis had to kind of go back to normal life and the routine, and that right then, like a lot of internationals started coming from really all over the world. Like sometimes you come here and there's a million different languages being spoken. Right. And, it's crazy to think that people are flying across the globe to like chop onions and sweep the floor. But like for them, it's like a really meaningful experience that they get to uh -huh. like actively help Israel and right. make an impact and right. just do something. All right. We have another beautiful volunteer right here. What's your good name? <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca, where are you from? I'm from South Africa. And you live in Israel? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> good decision. You know, it's Friday morning. Yeah. Fridays in Israel, I mean, it's, it's a holiday, right? So why did, why did you choose to volunteer rather than chilling with your friends at the Tel Aviv beach or chilling at a cafe? I just think it's important to give back in whatever way we can, help our soldiers, help the families that need it. And this is a great way to do it. And the vibes here are good and we get a lot done and it's really right. efficient. I appreciate that. We have a serial volunteer. Her name is Ariel. She's a very good friend. I have to say, Kolaka Vod. Thank you. Uh, it's been hard. Why have you decided to do this on a regular basis? Two reasons. One, to give back to the people who need it. I can't sit around when there are things to do. And two, like for myself, I have a lot of free time. I need to get out of my house, get out of my head and do something physically that I know will help others and be a part of a community. A donation of $36 feeds 12 soldiers and family members. A donation of $360 feeds an entire unit. And a donation of $1,500 covers the cost of their operation for an entire day. Why is this important? Because we cannot continue this operation without your help. This is how your donations would help. Sourcing ingredients to prepare fresh, healthy meals daily. Purchasing products like containers, trays and essential cookware. Paying for gas for their delivery drivers, bringing food to soldiers. The link is in the description box. Every rupee counts every dollar counts and every shekel counts. You know what they say, if you cannot feed 100 people, then just feed one. That's it for today and I will see you next time.